Yo, what's good, YouTube? I hope you're all having a fantastic day. My name's Josh. I'm back here with another YouTube video. You know what I'm saying? Today, I'm going to be doing a little team building 101, right? I'm going to try to tell, tell you what goes through uh, my thought process as I'm putting together my team. There's a lot that goes into it. There's way more than what we're going to touch in this video, but this is just some basic stuff. Hopefully, you can take it with you as you go and build your mutt rosters and make all of your wildest dreams come true but hey listen real quick before we get into that i'd appreciate it man you see some of the links on the screen here if you'd like to go follow me on my twitch it's twitch.tv forward slash latronx i would appreciate it and if you're new to the channel here on youtube man consider subscribing because uh, we can join this journey together you know what i'm saying we can have a good time man so i appreciate you guys hanging out with me today and we're going to be talking about four aspects in this video it's going to be the playbooks that you're considering when you're building your team the plays in those playbooks obviously important abilities that you want to be looking for for your team and then the players that you're going to be putting those abilities on all right so the first thing we're going to be doing is going into a little website called madden-school.com forward slash playbooks forward slash this is going to show every single playbook in the game now i like to pick playbooks based off the type of plays they have right so you want to look at playbooks that you have crossing routes to beat cover three corner routes to beat cover two and man post routes that'll also beat cover four and man right you want to have some plays at your disposal it's going to let you move down the field at some of the meta defenses right so it's important to pick the playbooks that you're going to be running now for offensively i like to focus on plays or playbooks uh that i can audible between two at least two to three different formations right so for example the new york jets playbook it has single back wing flex close and strong close right so strong close is the base offense and this has a lot of really good plays in it that are going to allow you to beat multiple coverages and you can substitute a tight end at fullback and by doing that, the personnel grouping is going to be the same. You're going to have two wide receivers, two tight ends, and one running back. And that's going to allow you to audible to wing single back wing flex close. So as you can see, we've got some pretty good plays that we have at our disposal here. And when you combine that with th other things like Hot Route Master, Slot Apprentice, things like that, uh, it really opens up the power of these two formations. Now, this obviously gives you the ability to have two different formations you can audible to at any given time. You can get in a better rhythm on offense, have a few plays at your disposal, but you know that can attack multiple defenses that your opponent is trying to run. Other good examples are going to be the Detroit Lions. The Detroit Lions have some really good shotgun formations, formations you can audible to, including bunch, bunch tight end, tight and trips tight end all of these formations are very very good formations you're going to see a lot of opponents running these as well but this is a really good playbook and you have four different formations that you can audible to at any given time if you're new to head-to-head -head gameplay don't feel like you have to go and audible between all four find a few plays out of maybe two of those formations get comfortable doing that and then you can start to build more in as you go if you're more of a toter, maybe you got a running quarterback, bro. Listen, the Baltimore Ravens have a great pistol that you can audible between. You've got pistol strong, pistol strong slot, and wing flex. All of these use the same personnel as well. You can audible between these three formations. And it's a pretty deadly combination for your opponent to stop. As you can see, it's got one of the best quarterback running uh, plays in this power option. This thing is really good. You can substitute a tight end at fullback and this is going to allow you to have this as your base and then you can audible to strong slot and wing flex wing flex is similar to wing flex close that we looked at in the jets playbook and you've got three formations that you can audible between to hopefully keep your opponent on his toes now when you're picking your playbooks and looking for these formations you really want to as i mentioned earlier look for plays that you can abuse out of those formations now what are we talking about well, if we come back to strong close, we can look and see that this is a compressed set and compressed sets usually do better. There are exceptions, but compressed sets are really good for not only running the ball, but also passing the ball. And if we look at this, we've got a really good post route, a stock post route from the tight end. And we can do other things off of it based off of what our opponent is going to be running. 
It looks like this Y trail play is really good. It's got a fullback flat route, and it also has uh, some good man beating routes. And we can, you know, do some different things with the X receiver over here as well. Crossers are really big, and if we look at PA deep cross, we've got a really good stock crossing route from the X receiver. If we have a tight end apprentice or hot route master, we can take that A receiver and put him on a cross, put him on a post, play with different things out of that. And now if we head over to wing flex close, we can look and see that we also have some really good passing plays out of this one, this drive wide corner. It's got a really good corner route from the tight end there. Depending on whether we have hot route master or slot apprentice, we could potentially put our other tight end or our wide receivers on some sort of routes. And then it looks like we've got a really good stock crosser from the B receiver and PA cross country. In addition, those two formations are really good at running the ball as well. There was a good stretch play out of wing flex close. There's a good dive play out of strong close. So if you can not only keep your opponent on his toes when you're passing and mixing up those looks, if you can mix in the run every now and then, you've got a really good one-two combination that you can use to help get yourself down the field. So if we come back over to the Madden School homepage, we can scroll down and we also have all of the defensive playbooks in the game as well. I'm not going to spend as much time talking about this, uh, but when thinking about building your team, you definitely want to consider what you want to do on defense. Now, defenses are not nearly as diverse as the offenses are. There's a lot of the same plays and a lot of the same formations in each one. Um, I'm just going to be talking about the multiple D here. It's got a few really good coverages. So if we look, this has a few different formations that are really good at stopping both the pass and the run. Nickel 3-3 and Nickel 3-3 Cub are very good. It also has Dollar. This is a really good defense at stopping the run and the pass. Three down linemen, two linebackers, and then six DBs. You can get pressure. You can stop the run. It's a very good uh, versatile formation. So as I mentioned, you might not be able to find those formations in every single playbook or those formations in the same playbook, uh, but you can find nickel 3-3, nickel 3-3 cub in separate playbooks. So a lot of your defenses are going to have similar formations. Now on to the next topic. This is arguably the most important topic to consider when you are building your team, and that is going to be the abilities that you intend to use. Over on MuttGG, if you come to the top left-hand corner and click on the hamburger icon, we can actually scroll over and we have an abilities tier list. Now this is going to show you all of the abilities in the game and it ranks them by tier. It has your elite tier abilities, which these are going to be considered the best abilities in the game. Your gold tier abilities, which are good abilities. If you can get really good value for them, they can be really good. Your silver abilities, which these are okay given the situation. And then you've got your bronze tier abilities, which are typically the ones that you want to stay away from. Now you can head on over to mutt.gg and look at all these abilities and look at all of the descriptions of each one and figure out if it's something that you want to use. I'm just going to highlight a few that I use on my team and ones that I would ask you to consider when building out your team. So the first thing you definitely want to make sure is you have a quarterback with a passing ability. You're going to need to pass at some point in Madden 23, even if you're a toter. You're going to need a passing ability and pass lead elite and set feet lead are going to be the ones that you want to look at. When considering these abilities, you want to look at quarterbacks and just players in general that get these abilities for a discounted ability point cost, right? If you look and you see the field general quarterback and the strong arm quarterback, they get set feet lead for three and four ability points respectively. But if we look and actually look at these players right next to it to the right, a lot of these players are going to get the ability at a discount. And it goes without saying that if abilities are the most important thing or one of the most important things in this game, if you can get more abilities out on the field and you can get players that have discounted abilities, you want to try to get those players over some of the others. Now, just looking at this, as we can see, we have the description of the ability. Passers with this ability have increased throw power on bullet precision passes made while their feet are set, except on high-low throws. And if we take a look at the advice over here on the right hand side, the increased ball velocity from set feet lead is game changing. It will open up offenses by allowing you to throw passes in much tighter windows. And it only costs three AP on field general quarterbacks. Some players can't even equip set feet lead at discount for less than that. They can now, but that's where you wanna make sure that you're looking at your discounts. But this is a an elite tier ability because of how it actually impacts the game. It's going to impact your quarterback is gonna be able to throw the ball much faster he's going to get a much better throwing animation when he is when he has set feet lead or pass lead elite i'm not going to really go into this one too much but this one the only difference is that they're going to have increased throw power and bullet precision passes period it doesn't matter if their feet is set or not 
Another ability you definitely want to make sure you're using is short and elite. This is on your wide receivers and your tight ends. Man coverage is definitely one of the uh, meta parts of the game for sure. There are a lot of people that run zone coverage, but there's a lot of good man quarterbacks in the game and short and elite is going to help you beat man coverage uh, receivers with this ability can catch more consistently while catching passes less than 10 yards from the line of scrimmage and basically what this does is as they're making their break on those shorter passes so your crossers your slants your post routes those all break before 10 yards so they're going to light up so it's actually going to activate as a better route technician um, in all honesty and Remember, we're looking at formations that are compressed, so they're going to be inside the numbers, right? So these breaks, the majority of the time in the offenses that we're running are going to be breaking inside the numbers. And then look at all of the receivers that get discounts, right? So again, you can help to save CD Lamb as a prime example. We, we took him as our free zero chill player. He gets short and elite for zero AP, and this is a really good card at 6'2". So this is what you want to be looking at when you are building out and finding the players that you want to have to run and occupy these, these slots. You could almost say to build the most competitive team, it would be to figure out the ability situation first and then put those players as opposed to the opposite, right? To pick the players and then try to fit the ability with them. I've been adopting the strategy of figuring out what abilities I want to run and then mold the players and, and pick the players that I'm going to have the most abilities out on the field. Other really good ones to have are gonna be edge protector for your tackles, deep out zone KO for your safeties, an inside shade at a discount is good. Pick artist is almost necessary for your defense. Let's give this one a little bit more attention. So pick artist, the defenders will have a higher chance to catch uncontested interceptions and they have unlimited stamina on the return. What this also does though is when your opponent throws a high ag catch, pick artist is going to ha is going to be able to intercept those and be able to jump up and, and and make the plays on those to whereas someone that doesn't have pick artist they're not going to be able to get the animations to kind of deal with that so it's important to have this and there's so many different corners that get pick artist for zero ap and you can combine that with a deep out zone or a mid zone ko or a mid route ko or a deep route ko for most effective and a, the most effective way to not only save on ability points but also get the most abilities out on the field Okay, lastly, let's actually go through and show some of the players that we're going to be using to run our scheme. So obviously a lot goes into this and nothing less important than the amount of coins that you have. It goes without saying that the higher coin stack that you have, the better players that you're going to be able to buy. So knowing everything that we know about the offense that we want to design, we know we're going to need an edge protector for, sh for sure to negate the edge threats in the game, right? We would like a tight end apprentice. We know we need wide receivers with short and elite, maybe hot route master on the quarterback, definitely a pass leading ability on the corner quarterback, right? So we need to start figuring out the players that are going to be able to you know, fit in this mold. Jordan Mailata and Nicholas Petit Frera both get edge protector for just one AP. There are some cards in the game that do get it for zero AP, just way too expensive. Those are, so these were the best value when you look at their attributes. Donald Parm is a free card that gets short and elite, but also deep out elite for a little bit of a discount. And with him being six foot eight, I mean, he's going to go up and he's going to absolutely dominate most everybody that we're running into. We already mentioned Lamb who gets short and elite for zero AP. Randy Moss gets short and elite for 2 AP. There's definitely receivers that you could get that are going to be better in that case to save AP. However, I feel like Moss's value getting deep out elite, where if we put him on a corner or a crosser, deep out elite is going to activate. He gets that for 0 AP. He's already fast. He's also 6'4". So I feel like this is good value. Spending the extra AP, I feel like is worth it here. There's not many other wide receiver cards that can do what he can do that are much better. And then finally, we have Aaron Rodgers, who has one of the best releases in the game. Combine that with set feet lead at a discount and hot route master at a discount, which does not, that allows us to not have to put, you know, tight end apprentice or slot apprentice on our wide receivers and tight ends. Rodgers can help to save us a little bit in ability points there. And he's also one of the best throwing quarterbacks in the game. All right, so on defense, we know we're going to want corners that have good man coverage abilities. So we want our deep route KOs, our medium route KOs. I want to get a lot of pressure really quickly. I want to have to make my opponent think fast. So we want to make sure that we have corners that have high man, high press, and also have good man abilities that we can maybe try to save some on as well. 
pick artist obviously is going to be a necessity we know we want to have something on the d line to try and help get pressure that is not 100 percent necessary but that could definitely be an added bonus if we can fit it on there so we can have Night Train have medium route KO and pick artist for a total of two AP. Same thing with Patrick Peterson. Trevon Diggs, while we have to spend a little bit more in AP, I feel like is going to be a better option than some of the other corners out there that we're going to be bumping up and having them play safety. Again, we want players with high press. So these corners are going to have you know high press. We want high man coverage. Diggs really good in man coverage even though he's his own archetype that's where you're gonna have to spend a little bit more but he does get a discount on pick artist and medium route ko so that does obviously help uh, when you are building him out so for three ap we're able to put medium route ko and pick artist for three ap we're able to put medium route ko deep route ko and pick artist on denzel ward it goes without saying how valuable that is if our opponent does throw deep or medium if ward is in the vicinity which he should be with his speed and his acceleration and his coverage stats if he's in the vicinity he should be getting a lot of knockouts for us Trayvon Walker we've kicked him down to the left end position in our dime he has edge threat he gets this for one AP now this is going to be completely negated by the edge protectors which there's a lot of them but in the event that my opponent does not have edge protector this thing's going to go absolutely nuts Walker should be in the backfield all the time we've got one AP pick artist on Slay Slay and Stokes are doing a lot of blitzing in our defense so it's not a hundred percent necessary that we have route abilities on them or route negating abilities rather it's definitely a necessity and if the coin stack was there and we didn't need to upgrade in another team another area then maybe we could look at a disc count on say medium route KO and pick artist for one AP but for now this works just fine and then lastly I want to talk a little bit about Richard Seymour here this is an ability that we haven't mentioned and that's defensive rally he gets this for zero AP it adds a pass rush point to all linemen on third and fourth down the way the offensive and defensive lines work the defensive linemen have pass rushing points and it costs them a point whenever they use a pass rushing move well, that ability that Richard Seymour has for a zero AP adds a point to every single D lineman on third and fourth down. So the likelihood that they're going to be, you know, at max points, they can spend those. And in Travon's Wal Travon Walker's case, that could be deadly. For zero AP, it is definitely worth it. And us having just a three down lineman scheme, the bigger bodies in Seymour and Adams, not so much in Walker, but he's, you know, serving a different role. The bigger bodies in Seymour and Adams can definitely help out, especially when stopping the run. All right, YouTube, that's going to do it for this one. Hopefully that gave you some insight as to how I build my team out and can help you when you go and build your team. There's a lot that goes into it. Yes, try not to get overwhelmed with it. Take it one step at a time if you're new. And if you're not new and you're just kind of stuck, hopefully this video helped to explain a little bit more about some of the intricacies of what you really want to figure out when you actually are building out a team. Remember, abilities are quite possibly the most important thing in the game. The more abilities that you have out on the field, the better your team is going to play. Don't get so focused on the overalls. Don't get so focused on each individual attribute. Yes, they're important in the grand scheme of things, but you want to try to find someone that is very well-rounded and can play the role that you need them to play. Hey, yo, listen, for you guys that stuck to the end, I appreciate it. It's definitely different for me going and actually making more of a put together video than it is just like talking to chat you know what i'm saying i really enjoy talking to chat so uh this is for everyone that stuck to the end i appreciate you guys that have uh come from the twitch channel if you're just here on youtube man head over to the twitch channel we have a lot of fun over there man we listen to some music play madden sometimes we'll play some fps's but yeah man we have a lot of fun over there twitch.tv forward slash latron x any and all support over on that i would greatly appreciate thank you all for sticking with me in this video and thank you all for uh being here here on the channel until next time i hope you have a great day peace